Today, I want to start by asking a question and a question that all of you should be able to answer. What does winning look like? For a lot of history, it was very obvious when somebody won. The losers got their heads cut off and the winners got to do this to their country. But what is winning and what is winning going to look like for Ukraine? From the salting of the ruins of Carthage to the United Kingdom owning Gibraltar, there's usually a story or some kind of physical reminder that somebody won that war. And there are a lot of examples where losing a war meant your entire civilization was about to collapse. But modern conflicts, it's a lot harder to see who won or what the real results were. Part of that is because we're so close to it. But another part of that is because some nations will just win a war and then recognize some republics. Wink. Because it's considered poor form to just be invading to take territory from another country. Wars of conquest are not in vogue anymore. And then give five, ten years and those republics will request to join with the larger country, the one that secured their freedom. And so I thought it was quite interesting to see that uh, certain newspapers or YouTubers were suddenly putting up videos that had this as a title. And that's kind of an easy thing to say, right? Because whether Ukraine wins in 10 weeks or in 20 years, they would inevitably win because of how modern wars are fought. Because of modern technology that allows communication over large distances and military doctrine that emphasizes a devolved command structure, taking the capital of a country doesn't end the war. Taking out the leader doesn't necessarily end the war. And so 20 years from now, Russia could still be fighting in Ukraine, so long as there are Ukrainians to fight Russia. Happy birthday to the crowd! The real question is, is this winning? And how are we going to define Ukraine winning against Russia? While the invasion happened recently, this conflict has been happening since 2014, at least. And so if we take that as our bigger picture, Ukraine has lost Crimea and the Donbass, and now Russia is just invading Ukraine itself. So does pushing out Russian invaders equal winning? If I were to line this up with historical examples, I would say no. I would say what we're looking at here is a status quo antebellum, a state of the countries before the war. Basically a fancy word for a draw. In a way, this is probably the best Ukraine can hope for. To use a sports analogy, it would be like Mongolia playing the All Blacks, right? Where you don't expect Mongolia to win, but if they come away with a draw, that's a pretty good result for them. Because if we line everything up, I don't see Ukraine invading Russia and pushing terms on Russia to regain Donbass and to regain Crimea. And although Ukrainians are fighting valiantly, Russia is ultimately the one who decides if the fighting continues or stops. While I was researching this, I found an article that said both sides of this conflict are negotiating as equals, much to Putin's disapproval. But that is wildly inaccurate, and we can kind of tell that by the terms. So Ukraine's terms are basically, stop invading, please leave. But Russia has a bit more of a laundry list of requests. I'm not going to go over every possible thing that could be in the Russian treaty, but I'm going to hit the main points. So the first of Russia's terms is that Ukraine would have to recognize the three republics. The Donbass republics with Donetsk, 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 and Luhansk, and the Crimean Republic. Also, Ukraine would not be able to host any international military bases, and they would be forced into permanent neutrality, no joining NATO. And the last demand is that Russian would be an official second language of Ukraine. And in return for this, Russia will withdraw its soldiers and Russia will allow protection from Western allies. Which is kind of weird when you think about it because they don't really get to tell the US or the UK or the European Union or anybody what to do. So this is directly treading on Ukraine's sovereignty. So if Ukraine accepted these peace terms, what would the result be? For Ukraine? It would mean that they stop being invaded. 
On the downside, Ukraine's sovereignty is severely diminished and would absolutely be in the pocket of Russia again. For Russia, this is a shopping list of everything they could ever want. It legitimizes the republics that they have taken from Ukraine. It justifies Putin's lie for invading Ukraine, which is not because NATO is getting too close to its borders. And it leaves open the door for the Russification of Ukraine. For Russia, there are no downsides to these terms. Editing Bobby here, and just wanted to touch on something that recording Bobby didn't really go over. Everything combined makes you think that Russia is going to try this again, and it's not without precedent. The specific treaty term that's asking for Ukraine to also get rid of all international weapons makes me think that it's going to be a situation that's similar to the Chechen war, where they lose the first Chechen war and it's terrible, and then they come back years later and they beat Chechnya in the second Chechen war. So this isn't going to be an exhaustive list, but without taking into account a general escalation, say a war with Europe or a third world war, there are really two ways this is going to end. The first is with Ukraine agreeing to some version of what Russia wants to happen. And the second is a similar situation to what we saw with Afghanistan, where Russia has a 20 year war with Ukraine. The difference being that Ukraine will be supplied by some of the most powerful countries in the world. But there is a third option, and it's a bit of a grubby option, but all things considered, I think it's something well within Ukraine's right to do. And that would be to sign the treaty and then immediately renege on it when it's convenient. Russia's behavior towards Ukraine has broken every treaty they've signed between Ukraine and Russia. Russia has no way to complain about how they're treated internationally when they have never kept their word. And in this case, Russia has ceded any right for countries to stick to the terms of an agreement. And when he cries that there was an agreement, and when he cries that Ukraine promised that this wouldn't happen, will point to every single treaty he's broken and say, Gif. Gosh. Do I think this will trigger a nuclear war? No. And the reason why is something I'm going to explain in another video. So, to sum everything up, Ukraine doesn't really get to win in a traditional sense. They can win insofar as Russian soldiers leaving their territory, but they don't win in recovering their lost territory and keeping their sovereignty intact. Even if this war draws out to the point where Russia can't maintain it and they leave, the republics are going to be a sticking point. While they're not officially recognized, they're still going to be supported by Russia. In regards to Russia, I don't think they're acting in good faith. They've done this once before during the Chechen Wars, where they signed a peace treaty and then years later they re-invaded, better prepared, better equipped and ready to go. My concern would be in signing this treaty, Ukraine doesn't really get anything material out of it. Because Ukraine already has an agreement that says it can get support from the US and from the United Kingdom. They have their cases ballet, they have their reason to go to war, but they're opting not to do it because of Russia's nuclear arsenal. And so, having part of the treaty say that Western powers can protect you changes nothing, because Western powers already have the ability to intervene militarily, and they're choosing not to. So, to answer our question from the start, what is winning? Well, if the definition of winning is that Russia ceases to invade Ukraine, then Ukraine's victory was inevitable, but if we look at the parts that Ukraine isn't getting back and the way that Ukraine is going to be treated in the future if they sign any sort of peace treaty at this point with Russia, then this is a Russian victory. And if the peace treaty is signed as is, looking back at this, historians aren't going to say this is when Ukraine beat Russia. They're going to say there was a conflict, both sides claim victory. But even if the peace treaty is signed, Russia has won the most Peric of Peric victories. They have been internationally embarrassed by their actions in Ukraine. And this just goes in with a long line of Russian embarrassments internationally. So th that is my very speculative take on the potential end to this war if it ends at this stage. There's a very real chance that I'm going to be embarrassed by future events, so 
fingers crossed that doesn't happen but if it does um i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did please like and subscribe and i'd like to say thank you to what i'm going to call the patreon wrinkle wrangler and i'll see you guys all in the next video peace